In this video, I'll be showing how to repair the mirror on a Volvo XC60. I actually had this happen on my driver's side mirror and I fixed it literally last night. And 12 hours later, the passenger side mirror started doing the same thing. As you can see, when it extends, it overextends. And uh, the reason for that is because an internal pin essentially gets uh, seized up. So um, it needs to be cleaned out and lubricated. So I'm gonna be taking this apart. This is actually kind of a good tutorial to follow up the original video I had when I was trying to figure out how to fix this issue. So the first thing that needs to happen is that this housing needs to come off and uh, it's a bit of a delicate process. Essentially the housing kind of comes off not straight back but kind of on an angle and I'm using some plastic pry tools so we'll see how we make out here. So I think I did a decent job. Uh, there's essentially these main uh, clips that slide into these latches. There's also some of these guide posts. Uh, invariably, unless you're super careful, some of them are gonna break off. I'm actually doing this in the cold, so it uh, unfortunately makes the plastic a little br brittle. The next step is to take off this housing, and you have to do that with the press nut here. I'll zoom in on. Okay, so the next order of business is to remove this press nut. The intent is to try to reuse this. These are kind of tough to find, and the only ones that I could find uh, were very thick. All right, so the only thing I'm finding that's working is the hammer and a uh, very pointed um, punch, and I'm just trying to wedge it in. All right, so I managed to kind of mangle the washer. Uh, not really happy with how that had to happen, but essentially if you can get a screwdriver under, you can kind of pry up the tab and hopefully, hopefully we can get this bloody thing off. Oh, there it goes. So I got to go find it. It shot up, but there is a, um, washer with a little notch that fits into the slot here. And then there's also a spring, which should freely come out now. So here's the washer, or the press nut, whatever. I hate these things, if I'm honest. Uh, don't know why they couldn't just use some kind of lock nut or something. But uh, in any case, it I didn't damage it too much. I think gently I'll be able to bend these things back and then reapply it. So now with the mirror free, the key is to get the mirror off. The trouble is that there's a cable that extends here. So you have to unclip it here and there's another clip on the other side. That will allow you to bend this plastic base portion out enough to get uh, this housing off. You need to get this housing off completely. Uh, the intent is to get at the motor which is underneath here. There we go. So it just snapped out on its own. It actually helped when I brought it back. This gives it a little bit more length on the cable. Not sure if you can see this. Uh, this cable back here is what the problem is. So let's lift this up and get at the motor. You'll see here, this is the safety interlatch and you see how much dirt there is here. Uh, this should be cleaned off with a wire brush and uh, some lubricant applied. Essentially, the issue is, is that the pin that's on the back of the motor, uh, Let's see if I can get at it here. I'll take it out for a closer inspection. Uh, gets jammed up and it is what is supposed to actually come in contact with, with these areas here. So the intent is to get the motor out, 
clean out the motor, um, release that pin, and also clean all of this up because all of this gunk is what gets uh, lodged in that spring. Essentially, you have to navigate the mirror in such a position that you can take the motor out. There are four small sets, uh, small Torx screws. I'm not sure the size, but if you've got a Torx set, one of them is bound to fit. You don't want to try to take this housing off because essentially to do so properly, you have to take the mirror out and there is a Torx screw that uh, goes through a latch in this housing. If you try to pull it out by force, you will break it. That's what I did to the other side. So I'm gonna try to gut out the motor without taking out this housing. Uh, be very careful with those Torx screws. They are very delicate and there's likely the same amount of corrosion on them as here. So uh, you don't want to strip them. Otherwise you're gonna have a hard time. Okay, so I got the four screws out. Uh, this cable is good to release. It'll help, it'll give you some slack on the motor and the motor should hopefully just drop out. Again, the motor just unplugs like this. So now you've got the motor out. So this is what took me forever to figure out this little stupid pin is where the magic is. So you need to take this housing off. This is actually really easy. This just comes off like so. You can see how much of a mess that thing is, but you gotta get this out and you can do so with the help of this little hole back here. To get this out, the way I did it last time is I used, uh, I have a very stiff piece of little wire that happens to just fit into this hole and uh, I tapped it out. I put some PB blaster in the last time. Um, I'm not sure how much that helped, but let's see how far this one goes. Yeah, you can see it's coming out already. Uh, there's the pin and there we go. There's the pin here. This is, this is the whole key, folks. So this tiny little pin is the cause of all the trouble. Uh, you might have to, oops, just be careful with this because it could come out. There's the little spring and you can see it's really filthy in there. So clean this up, put everything back and uh, you're golden. Sure, I cleaned out the hole uh, just using a very light Dremel um, bit and I clean these up. I'm not sure which lubricant to use. I'm gonna use this liquid wrench because it's supposed to inhibit corrosion and stop squeaks. I don't think it's actual corrosion that's the problem, but salt and road grime gets in there. So um, I used fluid film last time. The problem is it gets a little thicker, so it may trap particles. We'll use uh, this liquid wrench on the other side and we'll see which one lasts longer. If you notice, there's a small notch on this pin, which aligns with the notch on this plastic uh, bracket or gasket. The gasket just snaps into place, and you'll notice now, after being properly lubricated, it springs back to life. So that is what rubs up against that uh, metal ring I have yet to clean and uh, the metal ring actually sits in the grooves of this motor like, the, like this, but uh, when, the, uh, when it's spinning, because this ring spins around it, this, you'll see it here, it, it actually slides up against this ring. Okay, so I've cleaned off this ring. I've added some lubricant here. I got the motor back in. Uh, remember to guide these wires around such that you can snap them back in. Of course, I didn't do that properly. There we go. And now is the key to put the mirror, uh, to put the mirror back on while also snapping uh, this 
plastic portion back onto it. There we go. Okay, now what needs to happen is you need to find where the notches are there. So that's where the notches are from the mirror. So I've basically installed it in the same position that I've taken it off. Uh, when I put the spring back on and the washer and the cap, uh, it should basically find its way back. And then hopefully with that pin now engaging, should um, find the proper stop point. So I've managed to hammer the uh, push washer or push nut, these bloody things, uh, back into shape. And the way I'm gonna put it back on is I'm gonna tap it on with a socket just to uh, put it around the, the nut here. And I'm gonna use a uh, bigger socket here. Because you don't want it to be pressing right up against the... Now, I'm just gonna leave it loose for now. Uh, because I'm going to test it. So that's it. Uh, stupid little seizing pin is the cause of all these headaches. Uh, it took me a lot of time. Once again, I sincerely thank the viewer of my original YouTube video that showed how I was disassembling the mirror. They gave me the uh, uh, hint, the clue, uh, with regards to that pin. Uh, I had seen it before, but I didn't uh, realize that it was supposed to come out of that housing. I thought it was part of the housing. So hopefully that can save you a couple hundred bucks. Volvo's solution to this is to replace the entire mirror at a cost of, I think, $700 for the mirror and another two hours of labor. So uh, that's it. Hopefully this works for you guys. Thanks. The last step, of course, is to just reinstall this. Again, don't try to push it on forward uh, or straight on. It has to come in on an angle similar to the angle here. And uh, putting it back on is a lot easier than taking it off. That's all she wrote.